Hey, what's going on guys? Phil here. Welcome back to some Mecha Online patch notes. We're gonna go do a review today and talk about all the things that are coming here in July. It's quite a bit and this is gonna be a little bit lengthy, but let's go ahead and dive in. The first thing you're gonna notice right off the bat is the stone rhino is here and it is actually at the top here. Uh, we'll get into that, but this is the first in-game look at uh, the new 100 ton clan battle mech that's uh, arriving course on patch day uh patch is going to be july 25th for those that don't know let's go and get the preamble going here greetings mech wars we have a massive patch this much month that includes a brand new mech chassis the stone rhino a brand new map called saris metal scrapyard two new legendary mechs the stone crusher and the goss zilla the annihilator twins uh they've got weapon adjustments mech adjustments quirk adjustments and more see details below uh also up uh, is the MWO Comp Championship Series of 2023. Comp queue is opening for teams to be created, but matches will not start until August. Stay tuned for the launch of this year's tournament support pack and the CS 2023 announcement with all the details coming in August. Um, with that being said, first thing is the ter tournament support pack is awesome. If you don't know about it, basically, it's normally around 20 bucks and it's a C bill booster and that money goes towards usually a prize pool. So for those that didn't know, uh, happens pretty much every year. Uh, highly recommend it because like I said, it stacks with premium time, premium max and so forth. You can make a lot of C bills and uh, the amount of time you can use it. It's usually a very, very good investment versus other things. So just keep that in mind. Glad it's coming back. Updates are subject to further balance changes in the future. So get out there and do some science and get your feedback. All right, first up, we have the Stone Rhino. This is our first look at it. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick up close uh, and uh, just some little details here. Again, uh, very excited for the arrival of the unstoppable Stone Rhino. This mech is the single most requested clan mech by the community and embodies raw power intimidation. Formula 100 ton clan war machine. The Stone Rhino boasts an abundance of impenetrable armor and a weapon loadout that will make your enemies tremble in fear. Uh, prepare to stomp your way into the battlefield and unleash devastation upon your foes. You can secure your order. So first things first, um, this is our first look at it in game. We've seen uh, the concept art. I actually really like the way the, the mech looks. Uh, and uh, you can, um, you know, like I said, the, the arms are a little bit lower. Uh, generally speaking, the cockpit, though, I think if you can see it, you're going to hit it. That's one of the things I noticed on the concept art. Um, I don't know this for a fact, but this actually may be PGI's new 3D artist uh, that was helping with MWO. Again, my speculation, uh, we're getting the Stone Rhino because we're also getting it in Mech, uh, whatever we're calling it, the future Mech uh, single player title that they haven't announced yet, but they've announced them on the podcast. And this is why we're getting this. So my uh, uh, expectations are we're going to see this in the future, just like the Crusader and the Hatchman. But um, again, first off impressions, I like the way it looks. It looks like proportions are exactly like the concept art. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to look good. Uh, I think it's going to perform okay. One thing we don't know is quirks. Um, and, uh, you know, again, aesthetically, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, it's one of those things that's a hundred ton clan battle mech. It's going to be able to do things. Uh, some of the other omnis aren't, uh, and it's going to do some things I think better. Uh, but in general, I like the way it looks. I like the paint scheme. I will be changing the colors. Uh, a little bit here, but overall, um, aesthetically, I do think it matches the concept art. Um, I don't think it's uh, uh, diverged from that. So whoever the 3D artist is, I think they're doing a good job. So uh, if you're listening, good job. Uh, we do appreciate consistency between the concept art and the 3D models uh, looking at you, uh, Centurion. All right. Um, this was actually uh, previewed a little bit. I tweeted out um, from Kraz Dax, uh, the series metal scrapyard. It's a bit larger than Canyon Network and will be available in quick play and event queues. Uh, speaking of event queue, watch out for a special event coming up Wednesday, July 26th, Garbage Day, featuring new map and everybody's favorite, the Trash Can Mech. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this was sort of uh, tweeted out. Um, first things to notice, very dim, very foggy looking. Um, I think people that have their game turned up are really going to like it. I don't know how well uh, uh, night vision and thermal. Wow, that just bumped us down will do but um one thing to note that i'm seeing here is that you don't really have a super high elevations and super like lows it looks like it's a lot like canyon network um unlike some of the newer maps where uh, again the, uh, the the america coliseum map there's extreme highs which creates a lot of sight lines and balances and stuff so overall i'm really liking the aesthetic i sort of like the 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 
ravines, canyon-like, lots of trash, lots of uh, uh, junk lying around. Um, I dig the aesthetic, definitely a different sort of type of vibe. Very dark, a lot of like gray, I don't, not a whole lot of color, which is a contrast to what we just saw in uh, Free World's uh, Coliseum. Um, overall, uh, we'll have to see how it plays. I'm definitely liking the vibe. I think Canyon mean probably one of the most, if not the most popular maps in the game, especially with the changes. This may be a nice welcome addition. We don't know. Here you uh, can take a look uh, very quickly and see the um, drop zones and drop locations. Uh, so we got Alpha through um, Charlie on both sides, Domination, Circle, as you can see here, here's Conquest. Um, it's gonna be quite interesting. And it looks like uh, there's definitely plenty of maneuverings uh, looks like there's a lot of area to where, um, again, having jump jets will be uh, advantageous, but like you can go around with the regular mech as well without jump jets as well. So, um, you know, overall, I like the name as well. This is a well-known, uh, um, you know, manufacturer, I believe, uh, in Battletech. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, so, yeah, overall, I like it. Um, again, here's the, the dump truck with trash. Um, overall, I think the aesthetics are nice. Maybe a little bit too dark. We'll have to see how thermals and night works. Um, but you know, for those little, uh, uh, you know, fleas run around stealth, that's super annoying. This map, but will probably be, uh, uh, you know, uh, they'll love it uh, probably. So that's obviously coming. We got uh, two new legendary max. This is actually quite interesting here. Um, and this is uh, for the Annihilator Stone Crusher and the Gosszilla. Now. Uh, keep in mind, this is um, these mechs get a outlier quirk as it's described here, 30% uh, C build boost as well. Again, which stacks with uh, premium time and uh, cockpit items and tournament support pack if that's down the road. Um, uh, the uh, battle pass for those that are, aren't aware, uh, the battle pass is the new system for legendary mechs where you have to go to the website, click on the mech, and then you can you can unlock uh, the items that come with this. Um, and first things first, um, I like the camo pattern. Um, this is uh, very similar to one of the uh, others uh, in game. Um, that is, uh, it's sort of got a yellow hue in the middle. Um, anyways, I like the aesthetic here. But what do you get on the stone crusher? Well, that's a good question. Let's go and scroll down. Here's another actually really good shot of this. I like that camo pattern. Very nice contrasting colors. So I dig it. Um, I think it aesthetically looks really cool. Um, and of course, on uh, the new map, uh, it looks like too. So the first thing you're going to notice on the Stone Crusher is this is a energy boat. Uh, it's uh, quirk here is medium laser family HSL three, which allows this to fire all nine medium lasers with no ghost heat. Now that being said, you're still firing nine medium lasers, which means the heat from that. Uh, but you're able to do that. Um, it's got a max of a 325 here. Uh, it, you know, so, um, you know, you, yes, you probably could throw on a uh, light engine uh, to, to beef up that. So we'll see what that comes in. But a, a laser vomit, uh, Annie, uh, which, you know, all things considering we don't really have, uh, you know, and uh, you can see the base stats here. Um, we don't see the uh, unique quirk here. Uh, there's nothing, I don't think, with that. So, uh, we'll have to see. And then the next up is the Gosszilla. This is actually going to throw you here. I'm going to tell you this before we're going to go any further. There's an IS version of uh, this, which is the Stone Crusher, and this is the Clan Gosszilla. Yes, Clan, right? Um, appropriately uh, camo patterned here. Um, it actually looks like one of the current camo patterns that we have, uh, but green. Now, keep in mind, this is what it comes stock. That is Clan Goss you're seeing. That is Clan uh, Double Heat Sinks you're seeing. This is a Clan Assault. Even up in the top left, it says this is a Clan Mech. So we've got an IS uh, Legend and a Clan Legend. That's why they're doing both. Um, what does this get? Velocity, uh, cooldown, uh, Goss capacity, uh, and of course, like I said. Now, before you're losing your mind, keep in mind you can only fire two Goss at any given time. Quad Goss is usually a meme build that you see like on the Kodiak, sometimes the Dire Wolf, or even the Annie. Sure, generally speaking though, because you can't fire more than two at any given time, this is usually a build that you don't see. Now, that being said, um, 
you could strip this uh, extra goss off, throw on a clan uh, standard or XL because it only takes up two crits. And, you know, now you got a faster uh, mech potentially. So out of the two, uh, you know, again, I feel that's sort of a, a meme build, if you will, but the goss still is here. It is a clan mech. It does and can use clan Pharaoh and Indo. It's got uh, Indo. It doesn't have Pharaoh. Um, so that's a distinct difference between uh, the two. Um, you know, again, you can take uh, multiple LB uh, weapons or uh, UX if you wanted, but this specifically gets um, the Goss quirks and ammo capacity, so forth and so on. So let me know what you guys think. Um, are you going to purchase these? Are these two something you're interested in? Um, is one more entertaining for you? Uh, than the others with this you could do a, uh, a, a snub build too on the uh, this Annie with a backup mediums or ER large or ER peeps I mean there's a, a few things you could do there and then of course uh, with a ballistic Annie uh, you know you can go for... now weapon adjustments this is actually a pretty big one um, and it's interesting to see this uh, I don't I haven't been keeping up with the Joneses I guess of like seeing what people are doing with uh, clan ER medium builds but uh, heat penalty now this is a literally a hundred percent increase from 1.4 to 2.8 on heat penalty what does that mean that basically means if you fire seven er medium lasers you are going to double uh the heat penalty than was before that is a pretty dramatic increase i suspect that's also due to stuff like um the recent legendary uh you know supernova that can fire eight and so forth and with other uh you know weapons as well clan ER, uh, large poles uh, ER large, so forth. So that's a pretty substantial increase. I mean, six ER mediums is already quite hot, let alone now you're firing seven, eight, or something like that. So that's a, that's a pretty big increase. Um, there's no longer any uh, PPCs in the game that have minimum range. That's right. The PPC point blank range damage uh, is increased from 5.5 from zero. And then there's a sharp exponential uh, increase to 10 damage. Now, for those that don't know, this changed a while ago, uh, but uh, there's no longer a point blank damage where you get zero. Uh, now, at least you should do five and a half damage. Same thing, range quirks, and this is a note, range quirks and range skill nodes now affect the 90 meter range bracket as well. Now, my only critique to this, and I hope uh, whoever's uh, at PGI or maybe in the cauldron, this needs to be shown in, somewhere in the mech lab. It's always been really confusing. That little graph here, for those that don't know, there's this little graph here. This thing is so useless. That's one thing I'd like to see is it needs to show you where your minimum and maximum ranges or optimum ranges are. Um, it's it's really not good on the graph. There either needs to be a, a marker, a dot uh, to sort of better distinguish. And that also goes with like ATMs, especially with skills now affecting the, the optimal range and the minimum range. We really, really need that information. So again, uh, you know, Darren, Matt, uh, if Cauldron's listening, if you can, however, uh, that would be really nice. So heavy PPCs, uh, again, no longer have a minimum. So no PPCs in the game have a zero damage minimum. Um, my initial thoughts right off the bat are, I can understand why they're doing this because it's still dramatically lower, five and a half versus 15. And that's so people can't basically uh, stun lock, you know, run right up. I mean, again, you see someone with heavy peeps. What do you do? You get within their minimum and they're just sort of hosed. I actually sort of like this change. Uh, the same thing could probably be said about like uh, ATMs or LERMs, uh, maybe even IS LERMs or something like that. I know you guys may hate me on this, but the fact of that way, these weapon systems aren't just completely, uh, you know, you can't uh, do that. Right. So, um, Clan Auto Cannon 10, increased heat penalty, minimum threshold uh, to five from three. You can now fire four without penalty. And this is Clan Auto Cannon 10s, not UAC 10s. Now, here's something increased heat penalty multiplier to 24 by, from one. This is a 24 times percent increase. Firing five or more applies a large penalty. Large is a understatement. Now, I actually don't know what this translates into. I don't know if it's like a, you know, 10 heat I, I don't know off the top of my head uh let me know someone who's smart wants to look up the numbers there that seems extreme especially for mechs like the dreadnought and some of the 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 clan mechs that are able to boat um you know five uh you know so and then plus other uh connections if there's any uh ghost heat weapons that also apply with the firing of those it seems like a quite substantial um 
you know, increase, uh, especially um, from one to 24. Uh, seems uh, pretty uh, pretty crazy. Um, rack fives decrease spin up time, uh, decreased by 25%, similar to rack twos. Increase ramp down duration uh, to 10 seconds from nine and a half seconds. Um, now, I'm not going to go through all this, but there's a ton of a mech agility here. You can see Marauders, uh, you know, Mad Cap marked across the board. A lot of mechs increase here. My initial thought here is I like some of them. Um, some of these are specifically, um, I think, uh, to probably compensate for some of these falling out, like the Mark II Bravo used to be like the go-to. Death Strike as well. I sort of like this uh, move. The Death Strike is really, really good assault. Um, its torso twist rate is increased quite substantially. I mean, that's a, you know, almost a, you know, uh, off the top of my head, a, a, a third increase, if my math is correct. Um, or no, no, hold on. Let me see. It was 76. Sorry. I was looking. I was seeing. Anyways, it's an increase, a uh, substantial increase. And the biggest thing for the uh, Death Strike is being able to torso twist left and right. And then, of course, the angle. Um, so that's nice. I like that, uh, especially when light max. The others as well, I'm not surprised seeing a boost, especially with how uh, some of the other light max and mediums, how much faster the below category has got. All right, mech adjustments, Night Star. This is actually pretty interesting. Uh, if you didn't see, there's actually an image floating around of what they did to the Night Star uh, aesthetically, but they moved the arms closer to the body to improve convergence. For those that don't know, the Night Star has arms like a T pose. Um, that was actually originally not even supposed to happen. The original cop set concept art actually had the arms sort of slanted out. Um, but the problem was that lowered them. Um, so what they did is they just flipped them up. The problem is they're so wide that mech is notorious, notorious for convergence issues and just shooting past the target. Um, so what they did is they basically tucked in the arms a bit. That's definitely going to help it. Hand actuators were also removed from these Nightstar variants. The hand models will still display just for aesthetic reasons, but they removed it from the uh, uh, critical um, uh, space. So the hand no longer, um, again, because it doesn't have, uh, anyways, it just gives it a free extra slot, which is actually quite nice. So that'll be interesting seeing here. Uh, skill tree adjustments. I like seeing this. Uh, the enhanced UAC rack nodes now provide a jam time duration to racks as well. Um, this was already existed from ramp down cooldown. Um, so that's actually the rack nodes, um, them specifically, the UAC and rack nodes. Um, there's a bunch of mech adjustments here. Uh, you should probably go through them if any of these mechs, the K9, the 6L. A lot of this has to do with, uh, if you notice here, like instead of UAC jam chance, it's now UAC rack jam chance. Uh, some rate of fire stuff on the, the K9, 6L. Uh, Raven here, duration from 10 to 20. Uh, again, it's one of those things that's uh, uh, quite nice. Uh, I don't know why you keep messing with my cicadas, uh, Navid. I'm calling you out on this. Um, you've you've made the 2B sort of... You, you Talk to me. Let's talk. Let's make the cicada great again, okay? All right? You already fixed some stuff on it. I appreciate you, but you're, you're messing with my love child, all right? Don't appreciate it. All right. Um... There are some substantial things to note here, and I'm going to go ahead and jump to some of the stuff that we were talking about a moment ago. Battlemaster 1D, that is right. You see a negative 100% weapon jam chance UAC on rack. Now, what does that mean? That means you will get zero jams on UACs on the Battlemaster 1D. Uh, also, there's a variant of the executioner, but what does this mean? Well, the 1D has uh, three ballistic in its left arm. You can do two rack twos. You could do a UAC 10, of course. You could do uh, one UAC five, uh, but you you know it definitely does limit. You can do uh, three uh, UAC uh, uh, twos, I believe. Now, before you lose your mind, this is the Battlemaster 1D. This is where these slots lie. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. You can see the location here. Uh, that is very problematic because of how low they are. As you can see, two rack twos, you can only do one rack five. You can do, I believe, three rack, or nope, you can only do two you rack twos. So again, it definitely limits it here. I think most people uh, would probably do a UAC 5 or UAC uh, 10. Um, and stuff like that. But 
Why is that important? It's because that weapon will no longer uh, jam, but as I just pointed out, uh, look at where this weapon is. Uh, I don't see this as an issue. I actually think it's actually quite unique that they're doing this because there would be in Battletech uh, better variants and better models and stuff. Anyways, outside of just lore, some of these mechs do need help and love, and it's not like you see this being uh, used all the time. Uh, it's interesting to put it out there. You see mechs like the Centurion D and a few others, the Scattershot stuff. Again, very specialized roles. Uh, this is one of the, the quirks that came to mind. I saw this, very unique. Um, and of course, we definitely want to go down to the Executioner C. Now, they basically added a uh, UAC jam chance in the right arm and then increased the jam chance uh, negative 70 in the set of eights. Now, what does that mean? That basically means is if you're running this, as a stock executioner, this basically means that if you're using this as a stock mech, which means you're not messing with this, you're gonna have a 100% jam uh, chance as well, which means you can use a UAC 20 and pull the trigger as quickly as possible uh, and you don't have to worry about jams. Um, that's what basically this means. So um, you've also got, again, missile cooldown from negative 15 uh, from 20, increased cooldown from 20 to 25, it makes up for that. Um, this is a lot of set of eight quirks, you know, so this is all set of eight. So if you use the arm, you still get 30%, but together the only way you can get 100% on the, the UAC uh, jam chance is with a set of eight, which basically means you have to use it as is, which has its own built-in, uh, uh, you know, uh, quirks to it. Um, so there's that. Um, I, I, I foresee people utilizing this Maybe even, uh, you know, in a, in a brawler sort of combo. I don't know. It'll be interesting. But yeah, so um, there's that. Those are the the probably two note. Uh, there is some other things. Uh, Nightstar 10P uh, removes rotary HSL, but then adds rotary uh, autocannon 2 HSL back. Um, again, what that's doing is so that you can't utilize the bigger uh, fives. Uh, you got to utilize the two as well. So... Um, off the top of my head, uh, there are some other adjustments here. Um, go through the list, but those are probably the biggest ones to note. Um, and with this uh, across the board, um, Meta Warboss, did you guys see anything else on here that was to note um, as far as quirks? The Irby rate of fire. Okay, so yeah, we saw the, the rate of fire quirk on that, which to be fair is is yeah yeah Irby rate of yeah 60 per, or 30 percent rate of fire yeah yeah uh rotary rate of fire um which also goes hand in hand with the jam chance um added weapon on the k9 um but yeah that's it for a july uh the july patch we get two new legendaries we're getting a brand new chassis um i like that like i said the paint scheme on the stone crusher uh, it is a laser vomit mech. One thing to note, though, is as you can see here, all the high mounts on the torso. Uh, it's quite substantial, um, you know. And then um, on top of that, we have the stone rhino. I would have wished to see a few more images of the stone rhino, different variants here, um, just to sort of like compare. But um, I suspect this is going to be a mech that we're going to see everywhere. Uh, again, let me know if you guys pre-ordered it. Um, with that being said, one of the things they uh, normally do now is that uh, you can still get the pre-order bonuses. I think it's a month after the mech comes out. So I'll I'll be playing with this mech on Tuesday. You guys can see the performance, what it's able to do, what, you know, stuff like that. Maybe you want to see the hitboxes, stuff like that before you make a decision. I'll do a video when the mech comes out, give my sort of basic like first review, uh, you know, um, and see the, the performance there. But I suspect there's going to be a lot of them out there. Um, and uh, yeah, so... Pretty substantial, um, you know, changes, uh, you know, as far as additions. Um, new Mac is always great. New map is always great. Um, one thing to note, PGI, please up the amount of times uh, that we can see that map. I, you know, and speaking of maps, I would almost say like, uh, you know, make it a lot. Like let's, within that first week, I want to play as much as I can on here to the point where people start getting bored because we need to see how gameplay is. Um, and uh that's always one thing that always happens in occurrence is like a new map will come out and we don't get to because you know people mess with the multiplier vote multipliers and 
you don't get to to play it as much and uh so anyways there's that so overall um that's the uh, patch review uh let me know again what you guys think of the stone rhino are you guys interested in the legendary max do you like the aesthetic of the new map um and of course uh some of the changes to the max um, i think we'll have to do some science uh, especially with uh, some of the, the extreme changes there. But anyways, again, let me know uh, in the description down below what you guys feel uh, or in the comments down below uh, how you guys feel about this. Make sure to join us on Discord if you haven't done so already. I'll have a link down in chat. Also, I'm going to be streaming once per week on Kick. I'll have a link to the Kick's website where you guys can go over there follow. We're almost already to affiliate without even streaming on there, but it looks like Monday potentially my patrons are voting for that. So again, if you'd like to support, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member. And of course, head over to twitch.tv forward slash NGNGTV. I do stream Monday through Friday, have Wednesdays off. Um, and of course, my schedule will be reverting back to its old schedule in the future as of right now, just being a full-time uh, dad and streamer. It's, yeah, anyways. So cheers to everybody out there. Thank you again for supporting me, and I hope to see you guys on the next video. Until next time.